Hey guys, it's Madison Estes. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am editing Roadkill 6, Texas Horror by Texas Writers, and I am currently working on We're All Weeds by Kevin Holloway. This is by far the longest story in the anthology. When I initially accepted it, it was 11,000 words. After doing some preliminary edits, it's now 10,500 words. I remember the exact moment I got hooked on this story. I was working out on the elliptical. I had my tablet resting in front of me and I was just kind of reading through stories as I was working out. I finished working out and then in the middle of doing my cool down exercises, I completely forgot what I was doing because I was so immersed in the story. This story is about a woman who's a real estate agent and she's trying to sell a house in this neighborhood. One of the neighbors comes over and pretends like he's interested in buying the house and he gives her the creeps and he wastes her time and he's just really rude and condescending and it kind of begins this feud between them. And then of course as it does in a horror story the feud escalates and gets worse and worse. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Needful Things. You know with like having the petty grudges and then the grudges escalate and then you have petty acts of vengeance. It definitely kind of feels like Needful Things. And it also had a plot twist that I didn't see coming. And there's also a callback that I like where it talks about how she's learning the name of this plant and then later on at the end of the story it brings that up again and I'm a sucker for a good callback. The main character in the story is a little bit of a ridiculous person. She's definitely a Karen. She blows up things and makes them to be bigger issues than they really are. She's definitely a little bit dramatic. She definitely overreacts a little bit. She's a little neurotic. But you know, I think that's where the fun of the story lies. So I'm going to go ahead and get started editing because this is a very long story. It might take me multiple days to get through this story actually. But I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to rereading the story again because it's been a while and I really enjoyed it a lot the first time. So I just finished editing We're All Weeds and I was correct. It did take me multiple days to edit this and even now I might go ahead and go through it one more time just proofreading. But yeah, I really enjoyed rereading this. The main character is just as ridiculous as I remembered her to be. Just the antics that she gets up to and like the thought process behind her actions is really entertaining. It's just kind of fun being in her head and seeing what makes her tick and what's making her do these crazy things. I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I just finished editing The Big Ben by Chad A.B. Wilson and The Chickens That Are Not Her Chickens by Mario E. Martinez. These are two of the shortest stories in the collection, so I decided to edit them back to back. The Big Ben is without a doubt the most lighthearted and whimsical story in this collection. It's about a man who meets a magical talking Hopalina who convinces him to go on this journey with him in order to save a woman and her son. They end up having to battle a monster and some other complications are thrown their way. But what I really like about this story is the interaction between the Javelina and the main character. I love this story so much that whenever we started talking about the cover for Roadkill 6, I mentioned how it would be interesting on the back of the cover to see like a Javelina munching on a dead body. So that got incorporated into the cover. So after the big bend, I edited the chickens that are not her chickens. This is one of the shortest stories in the collection and it's also by far one of the most disturbing. So this guy is concerned about his wife. He brings her flowers because he mentions that she hasn't been doing well mentally and she tells him that the chickens in their farm are not their chickens. She said there's something wrong with our chickens. Someone has taken our chickens and replaced them with other chickens. It's an interesting concept. It had me hooked right away and the resolution to the story was very disturbing and just brutal and I absolutely loved it. So as for editing these two stories, I really didn't do a whole lot of editing. I had to do some formatting for the chickens that are not her chickens because throughout the story the wife leaves several messages for her husband so I had to reformat some of those. There were some spelling issues, there was a few grammatical things, 
and then for the big bend there was one part where I think that either the author or I had miscalculated how many bullets one of the characters had so we had to go back and fix that but overall pretty minor edits. So that's all the editing I'm going to do today. I feel pretty good having edited two stories in one day. I'm not sure what I'm going to edit tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure that after tomorrow I might take a break for a couple days and maybe work on editing this video and get it posted. I've been pretty good about recording every day, but I have not been very good about editing at all, so <laughs> I don't know when this video is going to go up. Uh, but yeah, I feel really good about the progress that I got done today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So I just finished editing For Sale by Owner by Corey Lamb. This story is about a dad and son that drive a long way in order to check out a Chevy that is, I think it's a Chevy. <laughs> I just finished editing the story and I don't remember if it was a Chevy. Okay, it's a Chevy. <laughs> I thought so. I was like, wait a minute, they're driving a Chevy. Are they picking up a Chevy too? They are. Okay. Anyway, so the story is about a dad and a son that go to pick up a Chevy. Uh, they find it on Craigslist, and as we all know in horror stories, Craigslist is a great way to find items <laughs> that are haunted, possessed, cursed, you name it. So they're on their way to pick up this truck. First part of the story is the dad and son developing that relationship, and the son is a little bit of a douchebag. So we develop their relationship, we learn a little bit about the main character, Phil. Eventually they meet the guy who posted the ad, and the whole situation is very suspect. First of all, the guy says the place that they're meeting at isn't his house, it's his brother's property. And then second of all, the truck looks like it hasn't run in a really long time which is very suspicious because why would he be keeping his truck on his brother's property? How would it have gotten there if it's been sitting there for a long time? The whole situation just doesn't really add up. But eventually Phil decides that he wants to give the truck a test run anyways, despite how highly suspicious the whole situation is. And that's whenever he begins to encounter some ghosts from his past. So this was a really fun story to read, a really fun story to edit. The only issue with this story is that initially I'd had a little bit of trouble with the ending. I just couldn't put my finger on it, but there was something that just felt a little bit off with the tone of the ending. So after going back and forth with the writer a little bit and kind of asking him, you know, what was your ideas for the ending? How did you get to this ending? And me explaining what I interpreted the ending as, we finally got to a point where we realized that there was this one part where one character apologized to another character. And I was like, we need to cut this. If we cut this one scene, the ending makes sense. But this one part, you know, that led up to the ending, it just, it kind of shifted gears in a way that made it a little bit more difficult to understand the ending. So after we cut that one part, the story feels cohesive and I'm really happy with it. I love ghost stories. I love haunted car stories. I also have a haunted car story that's in this collection, although my story is more along the lines of Bonnie and Clyde and a possession story and the story is very different. But like I said, I just love the whole haunted car trope and I'm really excited to have this story in the collection. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On this channel, I post book reviews, writing advice, horror content, and vlogs. And be sure to check out Roadkill 6, Texas Horror by Texas Writers, coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.